What is up, you guys? Welcome to the Twink Revolution. I'm Sam. I'm Gian. Um, it's been a bit for the <laughs> podcast. Yes, some of us have been working hard. Yeah, Gian was back in the great old city of um, San Francisco. The city by the bay in the in the Golden State. Um, <laughs> I, I've run out of. And you know. I stayed alone in Wisconsin having my main character moment of being alone in the house for a week. And I was lifting things. It yeah. uh, reaffirmed my commitment to never set foot in the gym. The idea <laughs> of like picking things up and putting them down recreationally is very unappealing, especially after I had to like load furniture and like get rid of like all the sort of accumulated shit of my eight years in San Francisco. I feel like you move enough though, where like one workout then equals like a whole like lifetime of workouts oh yeah no i'm, I'm ripped right yeah. now like i'm the, I'm in the best physical shape i've ever been in he keeps tearing his sweaters yeah just my bulging biceps just ripping out i've twunked out completely yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm entering um, my daddy phase yeah that's what i'm going for yeah also his plants are thriving for all you plant lovers i took care of them yeah no you did you did a very nice job actually i was i've got to admit i was skeptical i thought i was going to come back to like trays and trays of dead seedlings but um they they did good they were thriving yeah it turns out arsenic really brings the life and rejuvenation <laughs> to plants i, I mean, wouldn't eat them but essential heavy metals yeah you know. <laughs> um but also tomorrow is my birthday oh i know i'm turning 26 old we're gonna have to rename the podcast honestly we can't keep this is it twink death yet or is that 30 uh, way past twink death oh damn. yeah i think 25 was twink death honestly what am i now it's a, a dumb, a dumb bitch. I mean, a, a twunk in the sense of a twas, you know. <laughs> do a rebrand. Be like the dumb bitch revolution. Dumb bitch revolution. I think it'd be fucked. That would do really well. Aging gay revolution. Um, <laughs> I got a haircut and I realized like I'm really quite gray. Yeah. You can You're, see like I'm silver daddy face. That's what I'm going for now. I'm still beautiful and like red haired. Yeah. You still look like a child, so it's fine. Yeah. I think we can coast off that for as long as, as long as you remain twinky. As long as like... My many suitors throughout the world um, still get accused of being pedophiles. I think we can maintain the Twink Revolution podcast. It's true. The day that um, <laughs> you know Florida Congressman Matt Gates or whatever is not under suspicion for uh, soliciting <laughs> you, then then we have to rename the pod. Damn. <laughs> Maybe I'll go into a gym one day. Really. Maybe. No, you could have just gone and moved the fucking furniture. It's the same thing. That sounds like You'd be work. tearing your, your sweaters. I want to be like me. muscular, but have like no utility for the muscles like most gays. <laughs> just just pure aesthetics. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's reasonable, I guess. I'm not doing muscles to like pick up shit and like do work. <laughs> not to make it easier for me to fucking move. Or all this I had to move your fucking books. I have a, I have a bone to pick with you and I'm, I'm saving it to the podcast. Sam, how do you pack books into a box for moving? Would you say that you just take the largest box you can find, you just cram as many books into it <laughs> as you can, and then just assume that like the Incredible Hulk will be available uh, to, were, to do the moving? Are they too heavy for you? Y yes, there were the, the, there was like team lift. Oh my like, god! Like union rule says, I cannot pick those up. You're such a baby. I <laughs> carry them from my house. I don't think you did. I did. Well, then you should have gone and fucking carried them. I don't want to carry them. They're really heavy. Well, now you're swole. And the worst part is that, like, I know what's in there, and, like, half <laughs> of it's, like, awful, like, a Hayek libertarianism books and shit. The really heavy one is um a bunch of my, like, table books, and they're, like, travel books. Um, filled with <laughs> imperialist notions from, like, Lonely Planet. <laughs> I feel a little bit better about like breaking my back carrying those, honestly. Than um, yeah, it wasn't the libertarian books; those are light. They're very small. They're, well, they're, no, they're, I think they're quite physically heavy. There's there's insubstantial in content. Mm -hmm. Ah, burn. If I wasn't against book burning, I would say you could just throw them away. But <laughs> 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 oh. um, I also kind of lead into our first topic. I did an episode with lovely Mila, an editor of Twink Rev on her podcast, Actually at Capacity. And I talked about Yugoslavia because turns out March, it's just like mass genocide month. Um, <laughs> I, I feel bad in between lifting things up and putting them back down. I did not um, actually listen to that yet. It's I've okay. been meaning to. It's okay. Um, I haven't really done anything, honestly. Like, I just, I've just been sort of lying around complaining about my body hurting. <laughs> <laughs> 
is this is this what getting old feels like? I think it is. Yeah. I had like a bunch of acid reflux this past week and I was like, God, I really am getting old. <laughs> I couldn't uh, eat lemons because they would just like infuriate my like insides and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> it is it is sort of a twink revolution in the sense that like um the sort of inevitable trajectory for any twink is just their body breaking down as they become less less <laughs> desirable. And it's just happening to us and we're documenting it, you know, with one or two episodes a week of us just our our well, for for some of us, a slow decline. For others, yeah. a rapid decline. Well, what would be what a revolution if there was no end goal, and that is to deteriorate and become a twunk or die. <laughs> twink permanent revolution. We're yeah. tro- we're Trotskyists now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I intend to to keep declining forever in this manner. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you you did mention, and uh, I can't remember who called it out originally, but like March is a very bad month uh, to be to be a, a sort of a target of um, the Imperial core. Yeah. To, to have Sauron's eye cast upon you. In March 24th, 1999 was the NATO bombings of Yugoslavia. The, the most just and true of all interventions, mm. um, you know, very good. It, it saved lots of people, did lots of good things. I mean, it, if you're a Trotsky, you believe that mm. or like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> um, <laughs> March 20th, 2003, was the invasion of Iraq, also just and good. Um, <laughs> March 15th, 2011, was the war on Syria. And then four days later was the invasion of Libya. And then March 26th, 2015, was the commencement of what can only be termed as the genocide in Yemen. Um, really great. And glad to know our president didn't support any of those. <laughs> um, yeah I do wonder if there's a bit of a birthday paradox thing going on here though where like because um, the Battle of Waterloo was in June and so was Operation Barbarossa so take from that what you will I don't think there's any month you can really point out and say yeah that's a good one that's a good one for humanity no imperialism going on this month it's some spring cleaning <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think it's probably largely that I, I suspect that like some piece of um American military wisdom says that like March is a good time to do an, a, a, a ground war. I feel like a winter, it, like winter is the worst time. And a lot of these places still have like mountains and snow and stuff like. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I guess it makes a sort of in a sense. There is something very stark about having it laid quite so bare though, in terms of um, like every major like <laughs> intervention in like the um, Arab world be like in March. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, mean, I, guess, Slavia, I guess we just don't do that much uh, meddling in the Southern Hemisphere these days. Yeah, none. I um, mean, Haiti, that, that's democratic and not being supported by the U.S. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, isn't Haiti just north of the equator? I don't know. I think it is. I, I mean, don't it's, know. In, it's in the Caribbean. Which well, they're all. a dictatorship right now, and they're having they? mass protests to oust him it's backed by biden as well i don't think you're allowed to comment on that you're doing you're doing an imperialism and i have an opinion on that promoting the topics promoted by black voices oh that's very good yeah um (laughs) well yeah i'm just now sorry now i'm like distracted because i'm trying to like find other weird interventions we've done um (laughs) like oh the gulf of tonkin was in uh was august oh yeah there you go. That's the worst time to do it. I feel like it's so hot in like so in Southeast Asia. Well, no, that's that's uh oh, it's the that's opposite. Gonna be spring there. See, so I think it's spring. Springtime is when you uh, <laughs> when your imperial <laughs> ambitions. That's a good theory. I like that. Um, um, yes, I'm reminded of the producers now though. Yeah, springtime for Hitler. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of well, having... apparently Hitler was for doing shit in June, so you know. I mean, NATO it's is basically like the reincarnation of like fascistic terror on the glo- on the world, so it's fitting. Interesting. Um, so the question is, if we make it through March, I mean, it's it's the thirty first when we're recording. Does that mean that like, you know, con- countries of the of the world can sort of just breathe a sigh of relief for a year? Do we think or? No, we're no, just going to... Imperialism never sleeps. It's just all going to be below the um, <laughs> the equator. <laughs> it's all going to be August. Well, that's fine. Then they've got till August. So, yeah. you know, look, there's a few months of respite here. Our lovely listeners, um, get your people's armies ready and 
be ready. Right. Well, I don't know which we've, we're already in all of the ones. I feel like like we're not going to do a run still. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And maybe honestly, it's just to do with the the climate. If anything, it's just yeah. You know, um, perhaps our 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 conventional wisdom about good times to invade. We just haven't really figured out a good time of year for Iran because they have like skiing and like arid deserts. What are you, what are you going to do with that? Right. How do I, how do I know when it's right to rain bombs from the sky? And they have Asian cheetahs. Those are cool. So you don't want to kill them. They what now? Asian cheetahs. Are we stopping Asian cheetah hate? <laughs> so, so I've, I don't know what an Asian cheetah is, except I assume it's a cheetah from Asia. Yeah, different species. It's it's a cheetah that's subjected to um uh, undue amounts of escalating street harassment. Yeah, it's why all like the like golf monarchies and stuff have like pet cheetahs because they used to have them. They're not bringing African cheetahs in to have as pets. Well, they do now because they're like that's very less rare. Lux. That's yeah. honestly, I've, I'm less impressed. Honestly, I. I, for some reason, I thought they were shipping them from from Africa. They do that now because there's not many. Well, okay, good. That's more impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. If you just, what's the point of being a monarch and displaying your opulent wealth if you're just pulling in local stray cats? Yeah. That's not, there's nothing impressive about that at all. I had no idea. <laughs> That's really kind of pathetic. <laughs> yeah, they come from the Horn of Africa, like Ethiopia and Somalia and shit. Like that's where they go into the ports of like the golf kingdoms and in our uses like luxury pets by like rich assholes in their twenties who like got a bunch of money from oil and like Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Well, what I mean, you're, you're a rich douchebag. You're in your twenties. What else are you to do except like exotic pets? And, um, yeah, but they can't even enjoy it. Like they're not allowed to be in the same room as women. I'm pretty sure still. What the cats or the, not the rich 20 year old, like Saudi Arabian guys. I don't know. I well, at least my, so my my experience here is very limited. Uh, but for like gay gay rich Saudis, I know just all like go to Bahrain and um, that's true or Dubai and you know go I mean, wild. You know, this Bahraini like gay, and apparently like grinders just like endless blank pictures, but it's all like Saudi Arabian guys or it's like they're like torsos. So it's basically like so USA it's like accelerated. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> well which is great good um there's no gay clubs in Bahrain. i looked it up yeah you don't really need a gay club i mean there's uh, technically there's no fucking gay clubs in like most of america right now because they're all shut oh, so um i'm still stuck on the fucking asian the cheetahs being asian i didn't yeah i didn't know there's asian lions too and like in india and no, stuff. No, you're fucking with me now no i'm serious no i've seen the jungle book um there's tigers <laughs> in india i don't i don't there's no fucking oh my gosh do you not know this so i didn't know this this is now just being like the next the, <laughs> ne- the next 40 minutes of this podcast just be sam <laughs> explaining which animals are from asia <laughs> i'm gonna blow your mind there's also ostriches that you see part in, of the arab world basically like when i like like empires and shit and like the Roman Empire and stuff, like there was lions and tigers and shit in like Eastern Europe and like hyenas and stuff, and they just like all got killed for like luxury, like blood sport. Okay, it actually does. Now that you say it, it makes more sense that the 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 lions, um, you know, that Romans were doing fights with or feeding Christians to, yeah, uh, would would have come from Asia, because honestly, the idea of like trekking all the way to like sub-Saharan Africa to get yourself a fucking lion. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, there was North African lions that also went. Wait, there's space. North African lions too? Yeah, the Barbary lion. Wow. This yeah. is... Fuck it. Just why Why do we bother doing all this politics nonsense, Sam? <laughs> we could just do like fun animal facts. <laughs> nobody, nobody would shout at us online for no. that either. Nobody has fucking follow-up opinions on that. No, no, no one has opinions on that. <laughs> nobody's interested in that perhaps we'll see i'll make it political i think this thing right was in its right to it kill steve erwin no. whoa hey i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut that i'm just kidding i love steve you erwin death threats from uh do you remember the PETA the stuff Nation when they were Australia. like this is what he like, kind of gets for like harassing wild animals all the time well i remember the south park bit where they're like yeah like, i'm gonna i'm gonna put my finger up its bum hole <laughs> it was a good bit honestly it is really funny yeah. um but, 
Well, we've just gone right off the rails. Yeah. Honestly. This is what happens when I haven't podcasted in a I while. Feel like I don't all, remember how. I feel like all the gays love Steve Irwin because um, they wish they were like the crocodile being like wrangled and bent <laughs> back. Like, <laughs> 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 or he's the reason everyone's so gay. Yeah. Really? And he, now we're seeing it. a decline. Now it's just like queer and stuff. Right. The death of, of like, Steve Irwin was the death of gay culture. So yeah. That was Paris Hilton's fault. Really? Sure. Let's go off that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the march is almost over. So I think mur- yeah. murder, murderous march is, uh, you know, it's going to be fine. Um, this, the, the next one, the next thing we had to talk about, I'm, I'm, um, I can't believe that I am living in a world, like of all the things that have happened to us in the last, you know, year and a bit. Mm-hmm. The there's so many strange ones, you know. I wouldn't have thought we would just spend twelve months indoors. Um, I certainly never expected that I would be sort of like regarding Ted Cruz as the reasonable one in some <laughs> online video that surfaced. Um, yeah, cool. regard particularly regarding detention camps. I um, so so if people haven't seen this, Ted Cruz, senator for Texas. Um, released a video of him trying to film inside an ICE detention center. And um, and then this just obsequious, officious um, Biden administration hack. Latina. She's, she's yeah, she's got, her, she's got her three masks on and she's being like, I'm asking you to please respect the dignity and privacy of the people. It's for the people. She wasn't wearing a mask. She was wearing a mask she yep. oh, okay no she is she fidgets with it uncomfortably every time every time she she delivers the line of like it's uh, you should not film in here it's for the dignity and respect yeah and then she will fidget with her mask i don't even see masks on people anymore like i just like kind of see it's so normalized I'm i just kind of now. like I, yeah i can tell <laughs> um it gave um, me like aoc vibes where it's she like, did it's a very very similar kind of weird like psychopath uh, sir vibes. sir please do not film them this is not a zoo we need respect and dignity as you're like literally crammed into like a glass like suitcase which you would like at least like in a zoo they have the dignity to put like like one animal and here it's right. like they put like the broom is jam-packed people and even ted Cruz like this is during covid and it's yeah. like like how is their dignity in any of that no like, there's no yeah no no respect or dignity um on display and it was just the perfect embodiment of, I mean, for one, like, I don't for a, a second believe Ted Cruz gives a oh, I don't single so shit either. about this, right? This is just like Biden. Hammer, hammer Biden on the same things that people hammered Trump on. Mm-hmm. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Politics is, a, is a, a game of two halves, et cetera, et cetera. Boring nonsense. What was so creepy about it um, is that this is a, a Biden administration official who is deploying exactly that sort of kindly power rhetoric that we talked about with Ashley Frawley on what an episode ago, two episodes ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and it, it just has all that logic of, or that it has a, a, a tone and an interior logic of, um, we're just doing this for your own good. This is about kindness and right. compassion. It's important that people don't know about this because of dignity and respect well, it's like, AOC. it's like, yeah, yeah, starve me to death while you respect me. It's like AOC's recent interview of like the DSA be like, oh, these people who are saying Biden's not progressive enough are just privileged. And think of the black and brown and undocumented people. I'm like, he's like mass deported a bunch of people. He They posted in the Haiti embassy, like, do not come here as they're like supporting a dictatorship that's like massacring like the local population after like hundreds of years of being a neo colony after they tried to have independence. And it's like also like Biden administration hasn't allowed any journalists or politicians or anyone until like very recently. And it was one visit into any of the ICE detention facilities because um, they went let them into one, which was um, a child one. But the rest with like over occupancy and real issues, they're not allowed to go. No child or undocumented person was allowed to be interviewed. Most mm-hmm. of the time they just went to like empty rooms 
and like like a, like like a literal like let's go to the zoo and let's see all these people. Well, it's and fucked up that they're seeing empty rooms because there's certainly reports from that of the five hundred people in one of those weird plastic, creepy plastic like um, uh, holding cells that look like a, a a set piece left over from like one of those early X Files episodes. Yeah, they sort of want to do like an alien autopsy thing or something like. Um, they look cheap and nasty and they're designed apparently for 32 people, which honestly still sounds ghastly to me, but like, um, you know, we, we can, <clears throat> we can perhaps some um, quibble over the particulars of which, which dimension this is cruel along, but like the fact that it exists at all, yes, monstrous, but like, yeah, let's at least in- accept the interior logic of, um, you know, this whole program and say, okay, you've got this weird fucking plastic sheet cell thing that is designed for 32 people and you got 500 kids in there or some shit. Like right. that's insane. That is not like, it's all theatrics. It's like they even going to like things for like, it was just like rooms of like bags of like new clothes and stuff. It's like, why is it here? Not the children. Like it doesn't, like, it's all fake. And like the fact she's preventing a political person who's like elected by the people. I mean, horrible person, but like, doesn't matter. Um, not, show the reality is is like orwellian like censorship nonsense like do like do you think the people really give a fuck like they're in like a fucking prison thing do you think well it wants the american population to not know what's going on of to course them? they don't we're, we're respecting their dignity and privacy by keeping them completely out of sight and having their plight sort of reported secondhand i'm a little sad we didn't get a, a nice shot of um of ted cruz in the desert sun wearing a a, a white pantsuit and crying at a border fence. That would have been just wonderful. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, there, there's something very strange going on here in that um, this, yeah. I mean, so you have the entire kind of like DNC sheepdog apparatus, right? Who are all now making excuses for why actually this is a really hard problem to solve. And, and actually you don't understand, you know, what it, the people being like, well, what do you expect them to do? There's children turning up and blah, 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 right? Um, Biden has fronted up once, basically mumbled his way through a, a strange non-answer to a question about child detention, mm-hmm. um, child detainment, um, where he's all like, come on, man, is that a serious question? I don't, I don't even know what the... The things and the you know the people the people here aren't they're not coming down here for the for the old this this, this ain't this ain't baseball and the you know um, his senility I mean is is I it seems very serious well, it's intentional his handlers do not wheel him out often and when they do it doesn't go well um, he he is not there no and and what you're seeing right is. Um, the kind of corporate American HR apparatus steps in to essentially paper over a lack of kind of leadership or whatever, right? If you know, think about every time a company has to like fire a high level executive because they like their sexual harassment suit can't be hushed up properly or something. There's a whole kind of apparatus of these sort of just like HR drones, like the woman who was like, telling Ted Cruz to respect the dignity and privacy of the people he have kept in cages. Yeah. Um, and they, they exercise this sort of like benevolent power, which is always, you know, I mean the, the HR vacation sort of um, metaphor is overused, but it really is the correct one because it's always the presentation is this is for you. We're doing this for you. Yeah. We just, we just, we just want everyone to be safe and happy. and dignified. It's like, no, you, you operate, on behalf of power in the case of an actual HR department, it's on behalf of obviously like the bosses mm-hmm. in this weird manifestation of it. It's this sort of giant democratic machine that um, is designed to basically insulate Biden himself. Who's not there. Mm-hmm. He's not, he's not leading anything. He's not making any decisions. Um, and to tell everyone that this is, this is for the good of the poor and the, uh, the oppressed and the, the downtrodden. We're we're just doing it for the good yeah. of the, for the marginalized. Yeah, AOC did a video that DSA immigrants or whatever, like the official account for DSA is like an immigration group, posted, and she's like, basically like I have talked about this in this administration. Um, 
This is because of climate change and imperialism and um, trade and our carceral society. And it's like, for once, she never mentions capitalism, which even if she did, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact. No, she's done nothing. She, her whole campaign was like, one of the big things was end ICE. Yeah. And she didn't even defund it. She did not. She <laughs> voted for the bill that gave it funding still. Like she's cried yeah, at the abol- border. Which abolish, like, abolish ICE. Except now I'll make excuses for why it must keep operating exactly as it is. She's also supported like imperialism and all these things. She's not done anything to transgress like the party line when it comes to things like Venezuela or like every other intervention. She's like, I'm just going to fall on the party. She's like, I'm going to say go with the party. And it's like, yeah, that's imperialism. Like what is wrong with you? You're not doing anything that's going to change anything. Like it's all using these woke tar terms um, and like DSA kind of ideology, which is like, we have got to be got to stay away from authoritarianism. Yeah. So what you must do is export American freedom at the barrel of a gun, right? In order to avoid authoritarianism, anything that could be authoritarian. Like she's not even a member for real. Like she like joined the very end and joined, did not, yeah, like just and before her election. DSA did this whole thing of like this DSA guy from like the AFL CIO, which is like a puppet union of like the Democrat party. And it's like, this wasn't, it basically is like, it's like any socialist who critiques Biden is privileged and not thinking of these token identities and all this stuff. And it's like, guilty girl, like you're not, you haven't even called out like anything that's regarded to imperialism. You just fall on party line. Like, you're all like black lives matter, but not when it's like Haiti or like <laughs> not when it's to like actual like progressive governments or causes fighting against U S intervention. Um, well, yeah. And I, you know, I'd give you, you props for you were, you were out ahead on the curve. I think um, if anybody wants to dig through the archives, I mean, you were a big AOC is a phony um, advocate early on. And I was an anarchist still. When right. And you, 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 you smelled the bullshit. I think I had a, I had a slightly more, um, I had an, in, an ambivalent view of her in that I was like, I hope she, I hope she's real. Yeah. Um, if you happen to, I mean, if the thing is everyone copped a shitload of hate for criticizing her. It was misogynistic to criticize her. I believe we received some <laughs> breathless DMs telling us that uh, we, you know, we did to to criticize AOC in those ways was not a good look, sweaty. Yeah. Um. And it's funny now to see people, yeah, trying trying to sort of line up or stress some some idea that there's something there to redeem. There is nothing. And if you if you believe there's something still there, please. Subscribe to our $1,000 a month human ATM tier on Patreon, where we will send you um, one AOC themed safety pin box every month. Um, that's not the reward currently, but like we'll make, <laughs> we'll make it that. Like, um, because honestly, it means you're gullible and stupid. And I can tell you you're gullible and stupid and you'll still subscribe to it. So get on it, piggies. Patreon.com slash twinkrev. Yeah. For the AOC supporter package, thousand dollars a month for nothing. Well, it's like she, she get, she just backtracked so quickly in her initial rise to fame as a politician, which I don't think she even like was politician. Yeah, I think it was like during that build up. Um, if, if I'm wrong, I've, it was like the Palestinian Israeli thing where she's like, I'm going to support Palestinians. And then like, I she believe had, she was not in government yet, but she had won her primary, which sort of meant she was a shoe in yeah. for, to, to win. For and real. then she instantly backtracks. Saying, I don't know enough. And it's like, well, one, you should never comment on shit. You don't know. Um, but also like that, this gives me the sign of like, Oh, she's not going to be a fighter. Like if you can't fight because someone calls you a mean name, like, um, you're you're a loser. Call like, me an effing bitch on the steps of Congress. That's the thing. I because I remember a while back I once called her the, the horrible b word, and like, why wouldn't you say it again? Just because like, I don't think it helps the argument. I was just in a heat of passion. But it's like, <laughs> if you think that's what's really upsetting about all of this, not that she's like not she's like selling you all on the river to like make a buck. Like, she's not a worker. She's she's a fraud like she's part of like that tech build-up culture but pretends i was a bartender for like a summer and it's like cool like what? it doesn't change everything 
Well, and, and I think people don't understand why why we we reserve so much venom for her specifically, and maybe the squad and whatever. Like, yeah, um, it's not because her politics are worse. There's certainly no better than anybody else. Like, I'd pick any shithead congressperson at random, right? We know they're all like we know they're all terrible, and that's not an interesting or profound point to make. Yeah, the problem is that her specific packaging and messaging is designed to slip past the kind of critical thinking faculties of supposedly left-wing or progressive people. Mm -hmm. It is a way of selling you exactly the same fucking nonsense that, say, you know, Nancy Pelosi or whatever has been pushing for 700 years or however long she's been in Congress. Um, But but to do it with, with a nice face, right? To do it with a... A sweet, a sweet voice that I can't fucking stand, um, and and to do it with a smile and to do it with, you know, the utmost concern and the most current um, version of 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 kind of the the rhetoric of justice of social justice mm-hmm. and um, and it just so happened that like if you're sort of a cynical market actor in this fucking political climate economic populism was hot that was that was the angle in another generation she would have been tough on crime or she would have been fucking like i don't know a, a, a second wave feminist or something like it's just like <laughs> it's just what, whatever right it's a completely cynical actor yeah and i think anybody who's like doesn't believe that claim you have like I, I, I don't think the burden of proof at this point is on those of us who think that, that this person is completely cynical i don't think she has values i think she wants political office right um and then weaponizing her her personal trauma was like of course in, entirely in fitting with the the fashion of the times about how you how you be a politician right how do you how do you seek re-election etc cetera, etc cetera. It's, it's all just like fucking textbook nonsense at this point i mean all of these people the like squad the, the democratic socialists in office um, which if you have to imply your socialism is democratic, you don't understand what socialism <laughs> means. Like it's just kind of like ridiculous. Um, but all of them are shams. They're all there to capitulate power um, and maintain a system in a way that is actually probably smarter than what a lot of the right does, which also represents the capitalist class, but isn't willing to give over some basic little things to please the masses, to at least prevent, you know, the radicalization. Um, what, at all? least like at least people like who actually were really good at it, like FDR still gave a bunch to help the working class for like the next like 40, 50 years. AOC is giving you nothing. Even on Medicare for all, she kind of was like, well, we'll just do what we'll, 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 re- we'll compromise. I'm like, that is the compromise. Like you're not getting rid of private medical care at all. Like you're just getting rid of the insurance industry. Not even that. I mean, yeah, Barely, exactly. Like, yeah. Well, and yeah, so um, this is where, I mean, it's been said before, can be said again, I think, bears repeating, is um, that the, the idea that there's the appearance of a conflict or a contradiction that can be sort of cast in terms of Democrats and Republicans in, in America and and in terms of like even fucking like, you know, Tories and Labour in the UK or these, all these, all these sort of, you know, all mm-hmm. these sort of um, like capitalist Western democracies have evolved these sort of um, these wings of power that we like to sort of label. Right. And they're invariably two wings of capital. And in, in every case, right, it's two factions of capital fighting with each other through a political process. That's kind of for show. Um, and it's not a complete illusion that the the masses, as it were, have some input into this process. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, but it's the easy conflation between like which faction of capitalism would you like to ally yourself with, such that they will offer you the concessions that might make this, you know, palatable to you. Um, and I I think it's been interesting in the context of of the COVID response. Right, it's like which flavor of shit do you want to eat, mm-hmm. um, or, or rather, would you rather ally, align yourself with sort of more of a um, 
you know, manufacturing and or like petty bouge like faction? Or would you rather align yourself with like a mega international financialized capitalist faction? Um, and that's 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 what you get to choose between. What we then conflate this with easily is um, that it's about like who believes science or um, that your 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 response to a actual medical threat mm-hmm. um, should be predicated on on your support for one faction of capitalism or the other. Right. I mean, people don't want to acknowledge like we have a dictatorship it's just of a class it's just two parties and then even some small parties like the green party and the libertarian party are also like petty bouche or like capitalist parties and right. rock, um, they do not represent an alternative we can see like the greens who are considered like the eco-socialists when they come to power worldwide like there are like huge austerity privatization things like lee phillips does a whole bunch on his book austerity ecology showing like once they have power, they'll just do mass austerity and the poor um, because they're petty booze or like wine moms and like, you know, like, you know, like the college educated bougie class. Um, And we know like even if Bernie won, like history has shown, he still wouldn't not, he still wouldn't like end imperialism. He'd still be an imperialist, maybe less so, um, but like he would still be, I mean, you can see from Europe, the social Dems are not anti-imperialist parties. Even like Francois Mitterrand of France, when he was a socialist person, he was giving weapons to like Rwanda, which was committing like genocide. It's like um, he was not anti-intervention. He was just like less so than compared to like the British or um, the Christian Dems in West Germany or stuff like that. But like they were all in other countries like Denmark's in like fucking Africa right now. Why is that? Like <laughs> well, was in uh, Afghanistan. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, mean, I think the thing is this can sound like a pure sort of black pilled cynicism and it kind of is, but, a, but of a different kind it's, it's to say that um, I don't know. I'm just like, I, I feel like I'm just recycling like uh, tired lines now. I mean, to say the system is rigged is actually to like, um, it's an understatement. If the system isn't rigged, the system is functioning perfectly. And and this is what it's designed to do. It's it's as you said, right? I mean, it's a it's a a dictatorship of of capital that runs our society. And you are given very, very tight bounds within which you can make quote unquote choices. Yeah. Um it's like, well, yeah, the, the, the choices, the, the, the fact that there is a sort of an illusion of choice is not the problem. And it's not to say that there aren't sometimes some stakes in that, right? I mean, because that's exactly the proposition you're being offered. It's, would you, would you, like, your, would you like your capitalism with a side of gay marriage or, you know, a trans bathroom bill or whatever? Like, what, what, you know, what do you want? Yeah. And it's not to say those things don't matter. It's that, like, the... the the the, vi- the violence inherent in the system is that you are being forced to to contend with that at all, and it's I I you know the the issue is though is that um to simply have that critique doesn't do anything right that has it has to translate into something a little more and I, I this is where I've become maybe a little frustrated with some of our like online compatriots whose critique starts and stops there right that recognition is that's old as time mm-hmm. this you could you can watch people on network television in the 1960s giving this exact critique of american politics yeah. big fucking whoop the the idea is you have to figure out what you do about it yeah. you have to do something about it and to even like point out like like electoralism and a bourgeois democracy doesn't work can like makes it gets you attacked because like how dare you critique our best hope for these like little crumbs when like that's not what you're supposed to advocate for you want actual progression you don't want to just like, have a nicer like global prison where like yeah. everyone just like punched and beaten just a little less and that's fine like that that makes it right. socialism. Oh, wow, you, wow you want more beating sam you won't vote for the people who say they'll beat us a little less i mean i do wow. but in a consensual <laughs> <laughs> but no it's like 
people don't even want to like contend with like maybe this policy that you keep trying to do for like the last 50 years doesn't work. Like we know what doesn't work. We know like, like even if you have like the, the best guy elected, they still get murdered. Like Chile <laughs> tried this. Chile failed. Um, you can have Indonesia where the communist party was close to the nationalist leader. Um, that also failed. Everyone got mass murdered. Like, um, we know it works and what doesn't. And it's like, to even mention that, it's like, oh, well, that's just not doable here. And it's like, yeah, but you're not even trying. Like, you don't even want to see if it does work here or not. Like, like there needs to be, like, real organizing. And it's one of this play in the same system without ever, like, even be a lightly, like, slightly transgressive and pushing the contradictions to create that gateway for working people to get power. Right. And, and um, the... The thing I think, or like, I guess tactically speaking, I think it's easy to sort of speak in the abstract about organizing. Right. The one thing I will weigh into in electoralism, which it, it's, it has taken me a, a while to come around to this position. I fucking hate the Democrats. I really do. Mm-hmm. And I have for a long time. So nothing nothing new there. Um, I, I, I believe the lever of like, I believe the, the gear into which we can throw the wrench um, or the works to which we can throw the spanner for our international listeners, um, is the is the complete abolition of the Democratic Party. I think it has to be absolutely annihilated, and the earth must be salted such that it it will never come back. Yeah. Um. And and that would have the effect of of uh, you know it, it heightening some contradictions for sure, and and have some very unpleasant side effects. Um, in terms of Republicans are a faction of capital and you, you, you are, you know, as people like to remind us and have liked to remind us through every election for the last 40 years, or whatever that is to simply hand power to the Republicans who are much scarier and worse. Unfortunately, I think the problem is that the Democrats are as, as many have observed before me, right? The, they're, they're the, the, the off ramp for everybody, right? It's the idea of just divert whatever, energy there might be for changing things and put it back there with the, the, the looming threat of, you know, Republican social conservatism. Well, yeah. at some point you have to say, no, won't, won't do it. And I, I, I genuinely think like not just not supporting Democrats, I mean, actively working to harm them. I think, I think try to get them all voted out of office, try to absolutely destroy them. Yeah. I, would actually I, think, I think that's all you can do. I right was now. like, I kind of wish like, they put a good candidate against AOC because I don't want her to have a platform anymore. I think she's actively hurting like genuine working people more than the right. Cause we know the rights like not giving us anything, but she at least pretends and gives this kind of like carrot in front of you. That's like, Oh, well if you just grab it eventually you'll right. get what you want, but it never comes like, um, right. If, if somebody is, if you are in a carrot and stick situation, um, punch the person holding the fucking carrot first because they're <laughs> in front of you and then run the fuck away from the person with the stick behind you. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, you know, that's, that seems to be the situation we're in. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that's, that's my, that's my personal piece of political, uh, you know, lobbying. If you're, you mm-hmm. know, if wanting to get politically involved, do whatever you can to destroy the democratic party today. Right. Go go work on a fucking Republican campaign. I don't give a shit. Go and like fade a union and go fuck your leadership up. Like yeah, dude, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever you can do to get a union to not endorse Democrats. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Go find all the fucking election malfeasance they're doing. It's I just, just I think you have to do anything you can to stop these people because I I do think they they don't represent the greatest existential threat to. America or the world, although there's certainly one, but they represent the greatest barrier to people being forced to actually think about what world they'd rather live in. Mm-hmm. Um, because because they they have held this exclusive lease on on essentially um, you know working class power. Yeah, and I don't I don't want to help them anymore. I don't I don't want them to keep doing it. I mean. Because we're in Wisconsin, woo! Um, the Socialist Party, which was not a communist party, was like a socialist like party. They 
basically ended completely because of Democrats. Democrats were the ones who caved into like some union control and dominated the unions. And once they lost all the union work, people like leadership, um, the parties dissolved because like their leadership, like, oh, we must vote for this person. Numbers did because like they don't, they don't know. Like, I mean, some of them still did, but like eventually they were just campaigned against for like smears and attacks. Like, I think the last socialist mayor in Milwaukee was like brandished as like racist and horrible for doing like some revitalization of Milwaukee, which like might have been issues, but like it wasn't true. It was like a civil rights advocate and all of these things. It was from like the Democrats and the Republicans. And it's like, we're just seeing it happen all over again. Except right. they don't and have people, anyone in office. Like, <laughs> right. And, and that's the, the problem is that um, that's always done in service of electing a person who is always a compromised candidate with a D next to their name. And it's like, no, you have to, you have to make that a stain. You have to mean that to, to be associated with the Democrats would mean you can never hold office anywhere. Yeah. Republicans very bad. Yeah, we we know that. They suck. Like but but what do you like what do you want to do about it? You want to use the Democratic Party? You think you're going to be the one that takes it over? Uh, it's good luck. <laughs> good luck friends. Republicans are like heroin and Democrats are like alcohol where we're like, "Oh, well the alcohol's fine." It's like, "No, the alcohol's actually killing more than the heroin." <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's like we think one is better because like we're just propagandized to think, "Oh, well, this is the good choice." So. Well, yeah, if you're yeah, if you're a good if you're a good human being, you support Democrats over Republicans. Um and you you have to for one, you know, the the start of rejecting the false choice is not saying, well, yes, it's a false choice, and I choose Democrats. You yeah. can't do it. No, it's, that's it's that's that's the trap. Yeah. At some point, you have to not show that kind of brand loyalty, which is exactly how that system keeps functioning. So uh, anyway, that's you know that's my little. I just you know I I, I, I the more the more frustrating and and um, <laughs> this maybe leads us to our next topic, which is say. We're, we're actually talking about COVID again, yeah. which we've managed to sort of not do pretty successfully for a while. Yeah. It's kind of like, is COVID near the end? And I feel like yesterday I was like, yes, it's coming to an end. Things are getting better. And then you suddenly see a bunch of governments be like, oh, well, actually it's not over. So France, a country we don't live in, <laughs> has just issued a month long lockdown like strict lockdown you cannot leave from you cannot be six miles away from your house um there's a curfew um basically all businesses closed schools are closed and they're also like doing a horrible vaccination rates compared to like the uk and the us so like, like it'd, be, it'd be 70 plus to get the vaccine there and they just finally did well they, they 60 have plus. limited supplies and i i this is um <laughs> Wow, now now I'm gonna it's gonna, it's gonna sound like I'm just praising Republicans. President deals, yeah, Trump. I mean, one of the things he did pretty successfully, I'm gonna say, is negotiate a pretty like blank check for the pharmaceutical industry, and all it came with was this enormous rider that like the U.S. government gets to the front of the fucking line, and we get all these options on like, oh, you want an extra 200 million doses? Sure, take them. Yeah, like you you are required to deliver those to us before you deliver to anybody else. So we have the world's vaccine supply basically outside of like the Chinese ones, the and Cuban Sputnik. ones and Sputnik. Um, well, that's what I mean. Like um, their leader is not doing what's the interest, interest, interest of the people. Like at least like countries like Austria and stuff, their leadership has been like actively like we need Sputnik. We need as many different types of vaccines here as possible to help our people. And they just allowed it finally. I think the EU and stuff are like, still like well we're not sure like and it's like what are you doing like france is not gonna ever fight against completely because like they're they are the eu they are the eu <laughs> along with like germany like <laughs> um yeah i mean it's it's been interesting to kind of watch some of those responses and a kind of another another go round on um lockdowns and things it's been interesting to watch the the u.s where it's a very american response which is Fuck it, we're not really going to do anything. Yeah. Except we'll we'll pharmaceuticals. I mean, it's it's America. This is fucking America. Don't solve problems. Take a fucking pill. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's it, in that sense, it's it is a you know red red white and blue. God bless the USA. But um, I th I think this is you know maybe this will sound embarrassing a couple months down the road, but like at current vaccination rates in the US. 
this will be over for the U.S. Yeah. This will not be over for the rest of the world. And we'll be in this bizarre position where we were sort of like one of the worst places on earth for COVID and had lived in this weird, horrible limbo of like regional responses being completely inconsistent and, and contradictory, um, relying on sort of, you know, the, the voluntary um, good graces of, of businesses and then um, the whims of lobbyists and local politicians being in bed, you know, the, the example I was up to cite is like, you know, everything in San Francisco being closed except the fucking malls. Because like the property developers that own those happen to be very good friends with uh, the governor of California. Well, go figure. It's in like most of like SF vaccinated now. It was like a third less than I heard. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's the most, but it's certainly. It's like a third of San Francisco's way, vaccinated. Um, I think we are past the tipping point where um, most of the people who are going to die from getting COVID mm-hmm. have at least been offered a, a, a full course of vaccine now. Yeah. Whether they've all taken it or had access to it, I don't know exactly, but like you're just seeing like death rates and hospitalization rates dropping just rapidly. Yeah. People are still getting COVID because things are opening back up, but the deaths just aren't following, which like, yeah, well, no, of course, no shit, Sherlock. Like this was always a, a, a disease that harmed a, a, a tiny subset of the population fatally mm-hmm. and some very seriously uh, beyond that. And it's like, well, once you've vaccinated those people, what? Yeah. Like there's nothing left to do. It's well, done. It's, it's, this is over. In the case of Wisconsin, it's kind of funny because Wisconsin very early on had the Supreme Court prevent like the full lockdowns um, from the state. Localities could do lockdowns and stuff. It was just like, it was a like, control on like, state like overreach overreach, um and just recently again the governor who's a democrat tried to push a statewide mask mandate and the supreme court also shut that down and they're basically sensationalized saying well there's gonna be another wave and it's like we had a few days where no one died and it's like zero deaths in the state of wisconsin and the next day was like one and we're one of the best states in the country for utilization of vaccinations um, well, it's, it's interesting to see um, the eligibility opening up across the country because yeah. this was the whole game, right? As people were getting vaccinated, but you know, they, they, the criteria perhaps for our non-American listeners who haven't been living this fucking nightmare reality for a while, <laughs> it was like front frontline healthcare workers were in the first group. Then there was a sort of second tier of like essential something, something businesses and yada 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 like insurance people and you know mm-hmm. the, the, the urgent the urgent ones to vaccinate then eventually you got to the tier of like if you're just over 65 you can get vaccinated yeah which you know that is the highest risk population and then um they got through to okay you're like over 16 but you have any of these sort of serious health issues that might like be comorbidities. Mm -hmm. Um, And as of, uh, so April 5th, Wisconsin's opening up, I think. um, 16 up, everyone. Yeah, just everyone. You can just go book it. So I will be going, getting poked with like six different vaccines. It's so exciting. But it's like, why are you spreading this like sensationalist fear mongering when like the death rate's extremely low. Most of the critical groups are vaccinated. Like, like most of my family's vaccinated because they're part of essential industries and stuff. Right. Um, so I'm like, or everyone else has had it already because we did have a big spike a while back. And it's like, why are we fear mongering when it's literally just like party games between the Republicans who run the Supreme Court and the Democrats? And it's like, are people actually dying? No, it's like mostly young people and stuff getting it. And then they're have it for a bit and they're done, which like is horrible. Well, but like, we know the vaccines also, <laughs> that at least the CDC is now saying they see if you have the if you're vaccinated you do not transmit it to non-vaccinated people which is you know an important part of like establishing an actual yeah you know bulwark using vaccination which once you get up to these like double digit percentages of the population vaccinated particularly vulnerable populations yeah and service workers and things like that like great yeah you you've you've done it yeah i went and it, it, i think san francisco is doing april 15th now for everybody new york i think is Maybe this week. Okay. Like it's it's happening everywhere. Yeah. The idea is like you you if you if you know look under your chair if you get a shot you get a shot everybody gets a shot. Perfect. <laughs> well, and that's how that's how this ends. This does not end like 
I, I think everyone's trapped in a fucking mind prison still who's been living under the yoke of it. And they sort of think that like there's going to be some day when they, you know, Dr. Fauci will turn up on TV and say, congratulations, everyone, the pandemic is over. And I think, no, it, it ends when, when you finish your course of vaccination, should you choose to accept it. That's it's done. The it's CDC over. It's already over said you. if you're vaccinated, there's not really a point of having to wear a mask anyway. Is like, I mean, it's, you're only wearing it because of the regulations in place via localities. Like, I went back to my hometown, which is like a more conservative like leadership, and that week there was no more mask mandate for anyone. And I just walked into a restaurant. I was gonna grab my mask, so like everyone's thinking like, "Oh, how dare you!" And it's like. No one else was wearing it, so like it doesn't really matter if I'm wearing it. Um, so I didn't it wear it. It does not it. protect you; it protects other people. The workers were wearing, um, but it was like it felt normal, and it made me very uncomfortable. But like after like a few minutes, like and a drink, it felt fine. And so like, it turns <laughs> out this is fine. Like it's like it's it has to end, and I think we're near the end, and we shouldn't allow people in seats of power who benefit from it either to attack the right or other countries or industries that are benefiting right now from lying to us and saying like, it's not over yet. Like for the U S it mostly is turns out money still talks in the world. And <laughs> we just bought everything, which is bad for the rest of the world. But like, at least for here, we don't need to have these lockdowns anymore, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of the, um, um, so, so Phil, Phil Oaks, um, you know, socialist folk singer, um, I think in some correspondence with like Allen Ginsberg, uh, with reference to the, the Vietnam War, said um, like, what is it like if, if politicians can declare the start of a war, then, then we can declare the war is over. And I, I, I genuinely encourage people to like think that way. Actually, a great song, by the way, Phil Oaks, The War Is Over. It's great. So he held some concert, I think, in like L.A. or New York somewhere. And it was great where he just declared the war. The, there's like the war is over. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's what it has to be, right? If, if, if politicians can sort of declare the start of a pandemic as a culture war nonsense wedge issue, right? I'm not saying that the pandemic itself, yes, that, that, that was a biological fact that yeah. was, we were afflicted with. But our response to it as um, turning it into a kind of yet another just like disposable culture war nonsense issue, we we can choose to declare it over, and I, I I think we should. I think I think basically when your personal risk tolerance and your personal ability to um, afflict others with illness is basically zero, then the the, the pandemic is over for you. Congratulations, yeah. you're free. You're out. <laughs> And we can see world- I hope to join you very soon. We can see worldwide people are are making it over whether they want it or not. I mean, there was massive protests in Canada like a week ago, the UK and Italy, like all these places where like you can't really deny that it's just right wing forces. It's just, it's also just people un- fed up. They also underscore like, oh, it's hundreds. Like, no, it's like multiple thousands, if not like tens of thousands protesting against this shit. It's like, turns out you're not going to let your family like starve for that if you don't know one like france is on its third lockdown like no one wants that like it's not right. necessary like, like well and and not to the extent they're doing it i don't think no and that's the problem is people see the hypocrisy in it and and it's it's the the idea that like to to quote unquote flatten a curve is to um is to make a collective sacrifice to sort of preserve a, a the, the commons, right? This is, um, yeah. And I think everyone, you know, kind of got on board with that, honestly, for the most part, that was like, if you think about when sort of lockdown protests and, you know, mask protesters and people deciding to like film themselves being a sovereign citizen in their local, you know, drugstore or whatever, that, that should all happen later. The summer. When the true hypocrisy started showing up. Right. And, you know, it's not still, I think polite to say, but like, the fact that everyone just was like, oh, people having gatherings? Wow. Oh, BLM protests? Massively dense. Um, oh, those don't 
those don't those are not a danger yeah the biden victory that didn't spread covid even right. though there was a bump again after that like right and like the thing is yes it might be a, it might be a medical fact that it didn't but it probably is a medical fact these other things didn't either yeah the fact that everyone's <laughs> like beaches in florida are our, are our cultural battleground but it turns out you know inner city protests those that they just we 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 choose not to, you know, believe science in those moments. Like, well, okay, fine. But the problem is people are watching. They can hear this. And when they're having their lives destroyed by essentially economic policies that are that are masquerading as medical policies or science policies, mm-hmm. well, it expects some people to be very unhappy. I'm very unhappy. Yeah. It fucking sucks. None of this was good. And the response, like, to to watch um you know, now, now my ex state, um, <laughs> to watch our political leaders, right. Just exercise this like, um, industry by industry approach based on how cozy they were with their donors and lobbyists. It was disgusting. I oh, meant New Zealand. Well, no, I mean, that's a whole different fucking, unfortunately they've become the gold standard. That's what, um, old, old Macron is, is trying to do. Mm. That's literally the New Zealand model of like, let's do the most brutal lockdown we can for six weeks. And in New Zealand, it worked because it's an it's an island, and it has a you know pretty robust healthcare system that's been massively eroded by both the ruling Labour Party and the uh, yeah the 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 opposition National Party. So it's France's. <laughs> well, exactly same similar situation, right? It's sort of a um a, 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 a what was once sort of a welfare state, like a proud welfare state, now eroded by decades of neoliberalism, and they still have probably just enough social compliance to pull these things off. The problem is what the fuck's it going to do? I don't know. The one, the one that really shits me, right, is San Francisco um, owns the San Francisco, the city owns a lot of San Francisco airport. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not, they're not total owners. I don't know the exact details there, but they own a decent amount of, of, of interest in that, in the airport. It's one of the busiest international airports in the world. Um, they could have closed that airport. Put it this way, they closed the city. Yeah. Right? They decided unilaterally, ahead of state guidance, to say, we're closing the city. And then certain things became essential. Uh, gyms for city city employees stayed open. San Francisco airport stayed open. Yeah. That would have been a sensible thing to close, maybe? Anybody? It'd no? also be sens- Never mind. sensible for other things, like the fact that, a lot of people flying to Hawaii where the infrastructure is horrible. Like, very, like many islands don't have hospitals. They all went from San Francisco and LA of to course, like that's the Hawaii. And it's yeah. like, oh, we're so progressive, but we're going to let like this little island, like state, nation, whatever you just choose it to be. Nation. Um, yeah, it's a nation technically. But um, basically have you filled with like millions of like tourists when it's like there's not infrastructure meant for like pandemic on the islands well that and that's I, I i'm a little muddy in the details and hopefully some eagle-eyed listener who is um familiar with like interstate commerce rules i think the way hawaii managed to actually start limiting visitors was through local um control over like who can fly into their airports um um and then they the reason they were forced back open mm-hmm. was both their own tourism lobby who's obviously hugely economically powerful in, in, in that economy. Yeah. But also through, I think, threats to like highway funds or something like that, through federally. Trump, yeah. You know, Trump was threatening those. Um, California could have, you know... They could have helped. Like, but it was like, California has done a bunch of shit that uh, gets it denied federal funding yeah. and federal assistance. It can certainly afford to do it. The fact that their response was not like, gee, I wonder if we can slow down like travelers from the UK. Like international travelers could fucking fly into the US this whole time. We did it for immigrants. We right, yeah, it's about your immigration status. So like why, I mean, of course there's a reason why, like it's all these like dumb, like woke tarred libs in SF who like pretended to care about that, don't care about the occupation or anything or like actual real issues. So it's just like, there's no, I feel like Hawaii is not a tokenized like well, no, everyone um, was swanning off to yet. Hawaii because yeah. they're like, it's warm. Yay, oh my God, I'm so sick of lockdown. Yeah. I go to Hawaii. And you just hear all the horror stories of like people having like birth and like they have to like wear masks while giving birth for like eight hours and shit. And it's like, right. 
like, oh, this this is great. Like, you're really helping these people. Like, <laughs> yeah, go go back and donate to some more fucking Democrats, San Francisco. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think that's quite enough of that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so remember, everyone, wear a mask. Um, There's cheetahs in Asia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and AOC is our queen. Yeah. Um, donate to Democrats. And I'm turning 26 tomorrow. Wish me a happy birthday. Yeah. Go, go wish Sam a happy birthday. Yeah. Um, or a all bad right. birthday. Good anything else? Um, oh, next week there's a live stream. Esperanza is doing a live stream on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash twinkrev. Yes. And it's on April 7th now, I believe. Yes. Cool. Um, and after good comes. One. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I don't know what else. That's it. Cheetahs. Yeah. Motherfucking motherfucking cheetahs. (laughs) Well, uh, bye. Bye.